What is going on YouTube? I hope all is well and that you're having a wonderful, wonderful week. Um, well, I guess we're starting off, it's Memorial Day today, um, but uh, this weekend uh, I was a busy, busy boy. I have done this video a few times. Um, I started yesterday with it and I, I did a couple iterations of it and I'm just, I'm just not happy. They're, they're just running on and they're starting to be a little too long. But uh, there's so much information that I want to get out and I'm trying not to make it a two hour long video just to explain like this one, you know, bit here. So I'm kind of breaking them up and just bullet pointing what I need to. So I want to preface this video by stating that I do not use this layout, if you will, as my actual build thing that I go with. I use a circuit. Uh, I actually use a schematic and then follow through everything. And then, of course, I check things off. I'll, I'll create like a printout of this and I'll check things off as I know for a fact that the connection has been made. And something is missed. Two things are actually missed since I checked it this last time. And one of them is up here. If you go back to the other video, part four, you'll see that this resistor didn't exist. So let's zoom in on that here. Again, I'm sorry, I stutter a little bit sometimes. All right, so this resistor wasn't there. So let's go ahead and delete it and check something out. You'll notice that this uh, jack has T, S, and SW on it. This is a stereo jack. Normally it would be T, R, S, tip, ring sleeve. So when you see a quarter inch jack that's a stereo one, so it has three little sections on it, the tip is the tip, the ring is the ring, and the sleeve is always the ground. The sleeve is the part that connects to the to the base of the jack, if you will. A guitar jack or a guitar plug is just a TS phono plug. So it only has a tip and a sleeve on it. The tip carries the signal and the sleeve is just the ground for that signal. In this case, they're calling this a switched jack, so they made the ring portion of that jack the switch. Um, and it's actually not wired in such a way where it'll work currently, but it's just, I put that there to denote that there is a switch function on there. But let's put that uh, resistor back in, so we'll left click on passive, left click on resistor, right click to come into our drop down menu. I use metal film, we'll do that, bink. There's that, awesome possum, double click. That gives you drop down menu. Color band, we want the fucking color band. R6, it's actually R5 on the schematic. It is not a two watt resistor. I use one watts when I can. It's value, it's a one meg. Um, so we'll put meg. It is not a millimeter size thing. I go by inches. Sorry everybody, for all you other, uh, people on the other side of the ocean. Uh, so what is it? 0.375, we'll say it's 3 eighths of an inch long by 0.125, an eighth of an inch wide. There it is. So now that's in place. So that's how you would do that. Um, let's zoom back out and I'll show you something else over here that I kind of missed. So down here in the other video, this wire was a little bit shorter. So let's zoom in on that. We'll go 66% it's a little bit better. So this wire before, if I can click on it, was a little bit shorter. It was something like that. It needs to be a little bit longer. And there's a reason for that. If this, this is a, a safety connection here. This is the chassis ground. And it is the safety ground for this amplifier. So this is a very important, if not the most important connection uh, in your amp in terms of safety and functionality. So <clears throat> how it works is... It is supposed to be long enough that if this receptacle were to get ripped out of the amplifier for some reason, that it would tear the line connection and the uh, neutral connection first. So these, the, the line and the neutral connection would break first before this ground wire possibly can. And that is for obvious reasons because this is the safety ground. You always want to make sure that that ground exists. So in case this wire happens to short it out against anything, this is there to help protect you. So that is also another design consideration to keep in mind. So there's that. Next, I wanted to clear up the grounding scheme thing. Um, I mentioned that the star ground is the most popular thing that everybody talks about. I mentioned that doing it this way is just fine. There is another way that you can do it that also would work just fine. But let's conceptualize why the grounding scheme works and why it's important. 
objectively, what you're trying to do is keep ground loops from happening. What is a ground loop? Well, let's say we ran arbitrarily for some reason a wire from here to over here in the amp some reason for some reason probably wouldn't cause any problems but why would it possibly cause a problem let's imagine this point here as being point one this is where everything converges at this is where the ground reference for the whole of the amp actually exists if we were to draw a line from here to there that is one length and this is the only way that the ground path for each of these other portions of the circuit can talk to this point here. So that's why there's no ground loops in this schematic currently, is because they can only get back to this point here from this point there. Uh, path of least resistance. So from here to there is one length, and it's the only way that all of these other things can talk to it is to go through this point here. Another way that this would work just fine is to take this wire and lift it off of this turret here and then just ground it right here. Put a solder it directly to the chassis or use a very well secured uh, ground, uh, like turret lug or you know uh, soldering lug or something like that that you mount to the chassis here. You could do that. You put one there. Same with this one. You lift this wire up off of this turret. Take this wire and just run it here and you can solder it directly to the chassis there. Same with this circuit right here. You take this grounding lug, or this wire from this lug, and then you put it here. And then this wire, you can do it just how it is, right? You take this wire and you just leave it as it is. So you'd end up with one, two, three, four grounding connections that exist in this amp. That would be a perfectly acceptable way to also ground the amp. Now, why would that work? Again, path of least resistance, each section here is decoupled from the rest of the, the circuit through this coupling capacitor right here, or decoupling capacitor, excuse me. So if you were to draw a line from here to there, it is one length. If you were to draw a line from here to this next one, it would be longer still, etc., etc. The, the That path is longer for each one. And they don't talk to each other because this portion of the circuit right here has its own ground path. There's no other way for that energy, if you will, to come back in some other point to it, right? So now if you start, if you can imagine, now let's say you arbitrarily took a, another wire from here and then you ran it over to here and you grounded it there. Why would that cause a ground loop? Well, because now this thing has two different points of reference that it can talk to, right? It's not likely that it would cause a problem, but it could. Because now you got this length here that goes to this one, and then you got this length that goes to there to talk to it. Probably not going to be an issue, but it could be an issue. This one here, this is the ground for the potentiometer, it goes to here, which is encapsulated by the circuit that it is, you know, sending signal to. Let's say you took this wire and you ran, instead of putting it here, you put it over here. Um, or no, let's do let's do something else. Let's put it up over here. It's further away now than any other thing in the circuit prior to it. So it, it can have a voltage difference, if you will, because it's still taking signal from this half of the circuit, right? It comes up and it goes through here, and it references to there, right? So if you start changing the ground references into the point where there's multiple path lengths, if you will, that it can get to it. Um, where they can talk to each other, that can be a problem, which is why running a bus wire along the back of these is bad. If you think about it, from here to there is one length, from here to there is another length, etc., etc. Well, running a bus wire across the back is now trying to shorten that physical length that it has through the chassis to each of these pots. They're no longer, they're all combined anyway with just the chassis alone. But now you're trying to reduce that path of resistance by having another bus bar go across the back. And it's it's minute. Don't get me wrong. It is very minute. But then you go and you take, like I was mentioning, you take this lug and you ground it to the back of the pot. Right? So now this circuit right here has a second ground reference than it does from here. Okay? So there's this one here that goes through this path. Or let's say you put it here and ground it there. 
Again, it's got that reference there, but now it's got a reference to it over here somewhere from the, through the potentiometer. So it's now got two ground references for the same portion of the circuit, and they are different that they different enough that it can cause a problem. But what a lot of people then end up doing is taking a ground wire that goes from here to some other point in the amplifier as well, or to here, or something like that. That is bad juju as well, because now you've got three possible ground reference points. You've got the one that comes from this wire to here, you've got the pots themselves that you have tied to, and then you've got the one that wherever this one ends up at. So let's say it here. That's three different lengths of, uh, three different ground paths that can get to this point to reference to. That would be ungood. That is a recipe for noise injection. Because if there does happen to be any amount of resistance that's appreciable, you can get a, uh, uh, the ground, let's say if it has more resistance, if you think about it, at this point, there's absolutely no resistance, none whatsoever. At this point, it's got some level of resistance through the chassis to get there. Well, then as you start introducing other points to reference this ground to, or this ground to, or that ground to, you can have a difference in resistance on each one of those. And each of that little bit of resistance makes it so that one part is more negative or more close to ground than another part over here, which would be ungood if you could have all three of those reference back to the same point. That's how you get a ground loop. The, the buzz that you hear from grounding buzzes is the difference in ground potential between one part and another part. If one part is ac actually at ground potential and the next part is above ground potential by a ohm or two ohms, there's gonna be a voltage difference between them. One will be zero, zero volts, 100% zero volts, but this other one over here could be, you know, a tenth of a volt or something above ground, and that will manifest itself as a buzz. So that's why this works, this the little cascade thing here, or why running these up into their own thing. Again, even though it runs through the wire here, it's kind of the same as lugging it here because it's still just one path and they're all kind of in line. So this works very well, I like it. That is a way to do that. So I just wanted to clarify that. Now, let's move on to some of these design uh, considerations that we have here. Why did I build this like this? I compromised on having more space here to keep this circuit as far away from the rest of the amplifier as I could. This is the most sensitive uh, tube in the amp. Uh, it's, the, it's the preamp tube, or the first stage of the preamp tube, so it's doing the most work. So I wanted to make sure that this one had as much isolation as it could. The phase inverter is the next tube in this circuit. I don't have any other stages after this. It goes from this directly into the phase inverter. Phase inverter is not as uh, sensitive uh, because of its CMR or cross or common mode rejection. So it's not as susceptible to noise. Um, so it's just not as important to make sure that it's separated from other things. So I went ahead and closed it all up with that. These are all anti-phase signal paths here. So they're out of phase with each other. So again, CMR on these will cancel out any noise that gets in on them. But let's look at what we could have done differently here. Um, I opted to do this because it laid the lines in the cleanest for this portion of the amp, and that's how I just, I wanted to do that for aesthetic reasons, but you don't have to do it that way. So let's see a different option here that you could do. I'm probably zoomed in a little bit close, but this will help it up, help it out a little bit. So I'm gonna move things around and kind of show you how this could have worked. First, we need to set the uh, project settings for um, three-eighths of an inch because we're going to move the turrets and stuff around. So 0.375 is three-eighths of an inch. Hit OK. So it'll rescale a little bit here. So in order to make this work over here, we need to move things around, right? So let's go ahead and take this guy, and it should drag everything with it. Oop, I need to go to snap to grid. So snap to grid there. So when I move it back, it should, oh, it, ah, control Z, control Z, control Z. There we go. 
it went to a relative grid. Not going to work. So there we go. Let's try that again. There we go. Um, I think we're going to need to go two notches over. We're going to cross some lines here. There we go. We'll move this one over two as well. And then this one needs to go over two. And of course, it's behind this one. So let's move this over one more so I can get to it. And then this one is going to go up one over one. And that can go back, and then this guy, oh, wrong one, there we go, close it down, oh, and up one over one. I think I can move this down one here, sorry. Yeah, see, that's, that's what I'm talking about. So it just didn't line up quite the way it would have made it look nice, because uh, in theory, these need to be further out, and I wanted them to all be in the line here. So in order to make this work the way we would want to make it work, um, you can see how it would kind of, it just kind of gets weird. Like, obviously you could do it like that too, if you wanted, that would work, or you can just leave it up where it was. But now that started getting long in the lines there. And then of course these have to be outside. This is the, the, the grid leak, um, for the, uh, power tubes, but you can kind of see how it starts going at odd angles from everything. So let's zoom out a little bit and see what that kind of looks like and why I didn't opt to do something like that. You can do it like this, and you can see it gives a little more space over here for all this other stuff, but it just starts getting weird. What's nice about it, though, is it does center it over the top of the master volume pot. So obviously these lines would fall nice and cleanly, actually, in line. So that's not the problem, but it starts getting weird over here. Um, which isn't to say that you couldn't move the wire somewhere else, but there are different options that you can use, obviously, to run these wires, but you can kind of see now why... I did this the way I did. It was a compromise to keep things centered. If I were to put these in one, or not in one, but to move these up one or out more, I could make this line up a little bit easier. Um, let's see here, if we go like this and then make this one longer, kind of cleans it up a little bit in that regard, but you can just see it kind of starts looking weird. So that is why I did what I did there. It just made all the lines kind of fall in a little bit cleaner. So let's see what this would look like. This is going to show all the steps that I did. I'm hitting Control Z to undo. So this is what I opted for. And now you can kind of see why. It kept all these things from crossing over the top of each other. It just was cleaner. So just a consideration when you're playing around and moving, you know, moving your parts around that there's a hundred different ways that you can do this layout. I think this is the best one. Uh, this is the way I build them and it's clean. But try your own, see if you can find something unique. Um, another thing to consider, um, you'll notice here, I have a ground wire that this is from the, I don't have them showing over here, but these three lines or four lines right here actually go back to the output transformer. So the output transformer has the ground reference that it uses for the output jack run it from the transformer to the speaker jack first and then from the speaker jack to the star ground point or to the ground reference point for the amplifier so it's not as clean this way but you should do it this way i think that about does it i think i'm going to do another video after this that kind of helps i think what we need to do is source all these parts first because you really kind of need all these parts first anyway in order to build this uh, uh, you know do this layout so I'm gonna end it here I hope everybody's doing well thank you for sticking with me um, we'll see you on the next one bye